Hey, a friend, Chris here from WideLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Welcome to day seven in our Newbie to Ninja series here on the channel and website. We're going to help you go from being a beginner in Logic Pro to becoming an expert, where you're fully comfortable and capable to execute on your creative ideas easily in this awesome application. Today, we're going to dig into the transport functions in Logic Pro. And what I mean by transport are these buttons in the control bar that you've probably seen a hundred times in your lifetime. Buttons like play and stop, rewind and fast forward. There's the record button and a couple other transport buttons that maybe you're not so familiar with, but they're very straightforward. Before we get started, a quick little aside. As we move through this series, of course, we're going to dig into these different aspects of Logic Pro for the sake of being thorough. But once we examine these transport buttons, I'm going to ask you to pretty much forget about them altogether because there are much faster and easier ways to work with Logic Pro without having to mouse around for these different functions all the time. And the transport functions is a great example. The road to becoming a Logic Pro ninja or expert is paved with key commands. And what I mean by key commands are the keys on your Mac's keyboard, those letters, those numbers, command, shift, option, return. All these buttons do something in Logic Pro. And if you learn even a handful of key commands, you will see dramatic improvements in efficiency and speed as you're recording, producing, editing, mixing. Everything in Logic Pro will be that much easier and faster. All right, let's get started. At the top, we have our transport buttons, and they reside on the left-hand side of the LCD. To start with, we obviously have rewind, as well as fast forward, stop, play, record. And this button might not be as familiar. This is the cycle button. So obviously, if we start to click on the fast forward button, we move the playhead one bar at a time across our project. If we click on the rewind button, we move back one bar at a time. If we press play, we begin playback of our project. And if we press stop, we stop playback. Now we can see that the stop button, since we pressed it, has actually changed its format. And that's because the playhead is not at the beginning of the project at bar one. So anytime the playhead is not at bar one, the stop button doubles as the go to beginning button. So we can press that to return the playhead back to the beginning of the project. And of course we have the record button. So as you've seen in several videos, if we wanted to record to this track, we would first record enable it. So we're letting Logic know to anticipate and be prepared for audio that we want to record. And then we would click on the record button. And after that, we have the cycle button, which either enables or disables the cycle range. So if we click on the cycle button, we see a yellow bar appear at the top of the tracks area. This yellow bar in the timeline is the cycle range. It is a fantastic feature. Basically, you can set the left and right boundaries of the cycle range around a particular part of your project. And when the playhead gets to the end of the range, it loops back around. You're able to loop certain sections. So as you're recording or producing or mixing, you can hear the same section again and again. Check it out. really a fantastic feature. I mean, it's great for recording. So you can just set the cycle range, begin recording, just keep laying down ideas. And every time it'll loop back around, it'll create a new take on that track. But there are more transport buttons beyond these six that we see. If you hover your mouse over an empty section of the control bar and either right click with a mouse or trackpad or hold control and click, a menu pops up and we can choose to customize the control bar and display. And check it out. A menu pops up offering all sorts of options for you to customize the look and options available to you in the control bar. We won't dig into all these options right now, but we will focus in on the column for transport. So right at the top, we can enable or remove any one of these transport buttons. At the very top, we have the go to beginning button, which we covered when we explored the stop button and how it changes based on where the playhead is. Next, we have the go to position button which is pretty interesting. If we click on it, we actually get a pop-up that allows us to specify a specific bar and beat or time that we want to move the playhead to. So for example, 
we can move the playhead to bar 25. Pretty interesting. Once again, let's hold control and click an empty section in the control bar to customize the control bar and display. After that, we have the go to left and right locator. The locator in this case would be the cycle range right here, whether or not it's enabled or disabled. So if we press on the go to left locator, the playhead moves to the left edge of the cycle range and go to right locator goes to the right edge. Keep digging through. We have go to selection start, which if you make a selection either by clicking on a region, we can move the playhead to that selection. Or if you make a selection using the marquee tool, which is one of your mouse click tools. And we'll dig into that very soon in a video. If we click on the go to selection start again, the playhead moves to the beginning of the marquee selection. The next five options are exactly like the last five, but instead of just moving the playhead to a particular place, we actually move the playhead and immediately begin playback from that location. With the play from beginning button, it's like the go to beginning, but playback starts immediately. Play from window left edge is pretty interesting. If you are zoomed in on a particular section of your project, so let's zoom in a little bit. The playhead will start from the left edge of this view. Let's zoom back out. We then have play from left locator and right locator. So again, based on wherever the cycle range is, and you can just swipe across the top to automatically enable and set the range for the cycle range. And if you click on the cycle range, you can disable click it. Click on it again to re-enable it. We can begin playback from the left edge or the right edge. And then we also have play from selection. So not only do we make a selection, we begin playback from that selection. There's a dedicated pause button. And then there are two last options, free tempo recording and capture recording, which we'll dig into later in the series. Now, I hope that wasn't too quick for you. I'm really trying to convey how pretty straightforward these different transport buttons are. And if you'd like to add them to the control bar on your system, that's great. But from here on out, what I want to give to you for the rest of this video are 10 key commands that I want you to write down and commit to memory. Again, these 10 key commands are going to make your life so much easier, faster, more efficient. To start with, the one key command that every Logic Pro user should know by heart is the spacebar key, which begins and stops playback. So I'm going to press the spacebar on my Mac's keyboard to begin playback and then press it again to stop playback. I'm going to press spacebar again on my Mac's keyboard pay attention to where the playhead begins playing back from because originally the playhead started at bar one. Here we go. And if we press it again, okay, so the playhead begins playback from wherever it left off. So before we move on to the next key command, I want you to go up to the play button in the control bar and I want you to click and hold on the play button with your mouse or trackpad. A menu is going to pop up and you're going to see that there are different options to customize how playback works in Logic Pro. I'm going to recommend that you go down to play from last locate position and enable this option. By default, Logic Pro's playhead starts from wherever it last stopped. And I find this incredibly inefficient to work with. So now if we move the playhead to the beginning of the project and press spacebar, I just press spacebar to stop playback. And if I press it again, the playhead goes back to its original starting position and begins playback again. Much easier and much faster because how often are you wanting to hear the same part again and again? Key command number two is the return key, which returns you back to the beginning of the project. 
So even if we hadn't customized playback, we can go right back to the beginning of our project very easily with this one key. The next two key commands are the angled bracket keys. By pressing on the right angled bracket, we can fast forward one bar at a time. And if we press the left angled bracket key, we can rewind one bar at a time. So let's move the playhead forward maybe to bar seven and begin playback. Right, so I'm using spacebar to begin playback, and then I'm using the angled bracket keys to move forward or backwards in time across the project. And based on where I place the playhead using these keys, that's where playback begins. And if we press spacebar again, perfect. Then the next two key commands are the shift and angled bracket keys, which allow you to skip forward or backwards by eight bars at a time. So you can navigate quickly through your project if you need to. Key command number seven is the C key, which enables or disables the cycle range. Incredibly handy to focus in on a section. Of course, you may have to focus the cycle range on a particular section of your project. So you could go to the left and right boundaries and adjust them. Or key command number eight, if we make a selection and use key command command U, the cycle range adapts to your selection. So again, if we make a selection, command U, then we can begin playback. This works with any marquee selections you make as well. Key command R is another fundamental key command everyone should know, and that begins recording wherever the playhead is. And then key command number 10 is shift and spacebar will begin playback from any selection. So if we make this selection, hold shift and press spacebar, And actually, I have one more for you. If you hover your mouse over any section of the tracks area where there's not a region existing, if you hold shift and click, the playhead will move to the location of the pointer. There you have it. Just about every transport button in Logic Pro fully explained. And hopefully you'll get right down to using these 10 key commands instead. Write them down and please commit them to memory. It's going to make your life so much easier. All right, tomorrow in this Newbie to Ninja series, we're going to dig in deeper when it comes to navigating around your projects, specifically zooming around the projects. Thanks so much, and I'll see you for more tomorrow. Take care.